Hi, I'm Eric and you're watching Sideboard MTG here on YouTube Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about Guilds of Ravnica's top 8 decks. Now these are the best decks in Standard right now, and no, that doesn't mean that they're the only good decks in Standard, but these are the ones that have been giving us the most numbers. We're going to talk about those decks. Got a couple honorable mentions, so I hope you guys like today's show. If you do, give it that thumbs up, and if you like the content in general, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you want to play any of these decks, you should check out Mana Traders. They're a rental service where you can play and test any deck you want on MTGO for a flat rate, and then you know where to spend your gems, your rare wild cards, or your hard-earned cash for your paper cards. Know what you're getting into before you play or buy a deck. All right, so let's um, let's just jump straight into it here. Uh, we're going to be talking about Golgari right off the bat. Um, I've got Golgari listed as a Tier 1 deck. I believe the deck is 100% a Tier 1 deck. And um, most of that is in part of it having the ability to go deep into the late game, having uh, answers for, you know, even the mirror. It's very, it's very good at fighting even the mirror. Um, it has really good options with cards like Wild Growth Walker at being able to fight against red decks and things of that nature, uh, being able to gain some life. We are starting to see more and more copies of these Wild Growth Walkers be pushed into the sideboard, but I believe that we're going to see a fluctuation of, um, you know, some in the sideboard, some in the main, uh, throughout the meta. Based on you know how well the aggro decks are doing and the meta call of you know do you think there's going to be a ton of red deck because we're going to talk about red deck but if you think there's going to be a ton of red deck then you may want more main board wild growth walkers but the rest of the deck is getting pretty consistent most people are running some number of land of war elves uh, merfolk branch walkers seeker squire j light ranger and Golgari Fine Broker, along with Ravenous Chupacabra, make up the bulk of the deck. You see a lot of, you know, um, you know, ones and two ofs, you know, with cards like Cast Down. It's becoming a thing that you need to be able to answer to Kotli Honor Guard. A lot of people are really not liking the uh, the idea of using Assassin's Trophy. So Assassin's Trophy may be on the out right now. I know a lot of people were trying it, but it's just not working 100%. And then uh, Thrashing Brontodon. Uh, absolutely wonderful card. We're seeing this in some of the deck list. Brontodon being able to destroy cards like um, uh, Immortal Sun, which we'll talk about a little bit later in some of the other decks. But, um, you know, the deck is pretty straightforward. You want to be playing, you know, your early creatures, your value creatures like Fine Broker and Chupacabra, and then you want to get into a Vivian Reed or a Carnage Tyrant as quickly as possible. It seems that um, the, the best cards for the mirror are Vivian Reed for just pure card advantage, being able to plus one her and getting those extra, um, you know, creatures to put down on the battlefield is absolutely wonderful. It helps you dig for your Carnage Tyrants. And in the mirror, normally the person who you know, keeps their Vivian Reed the longest or gets to their Carnage Tyrant first ends up winning the match. It does need to be said that cards like Fine Finale, uh, the Finale side of this uh, being the perfect follow-up for your Carnage Tyrant, the deck does have the opportunity to get Carnage Tyrant down at a very early rate. It can come down as early as turn four. I have seen it come down as early as turn three with a triple Lana War draw. But that's not something that you can expect very often. Um, but as soon as you get your Carnage Tyrant down, you're going to want a finale in the mirror to, to just go ahead and get rid of uh, you know everything that they have on the board. Your Carnage Tyrant will still be you know more than healthy, and it will be large enough in sub subsequent turns to fight off opposing Carnage Tyrants. So Fine Finale along with Carnage Tyrant and Vivian Reed seems to be where this deck has um, has been kind of shifting into into now i do want to mention um seth manfield's version of the deck seth wrote a um, very good article about you know adding karn scion of urza to his version of the deck you'll also notice that he is not running wild growth walker um he did do very well um he did um i think get top 32 uh with this deck at the GP, so, um, you know, not a bad run for Seth, but uh, it kind of makes you think, you know, were the Wild Growth Walkers necessary? Did he need the Wild Growth Walkers? I would love to know how many times he lost to, like, Red Deck or something of that nature, or some aggressive deck that just got under him, uh, and that's pretty much why you're wanting Wild Growth Walker. Uh, you'll see that, um, you know, Seth has, you know, a copy of Assassin's Trophy, which a lot of the other decks don't um, cast down, but he's got 
multiple copies of Roscoe's Contempt in the main board. We are seeing a few of this. He's still not backing off the Golgari Fine Broker. Seems to be a good stable two of. But Seth is 100% on his six drops here. And you'll notice that he's got a little bit more ramp here with Druid of the Cow along with his Land of War Elves than a, as a lot of the other decks do. Now, I still think that Seth's got a very, very good deck here. And I think that the, the main board... Uh, Vivian Reed's Carnage Tyrants and Fine Brokers, or, or sorry, Fine Finales, really help put this deck where it needs to be to fight the meta. Um, and that being a meta full of Golgari midrange. Now, we may see that change a little bit in the near future. Um, that's kind of one of the reasons for Karn Scion of Urza. Karn Scion of Urza really helps you get those additional lands you need because most of the time your opponent's going to give you the land out of the two cards that they see. So, Karn Scion of Urza showing up in these decks, you know, really helping you get to that six mana to be able to cast your Carnage Tyrants or your Vivian Reeds on turn, being able to cast Fine Finale when it's necessary is very, very important. And, um, Seth forwent the Golgari um, Queens, uh, Verasco Golgari Queens in this deck for Car uh, Karn Scion of Urza. And that is simply because of the uh, card advantage that you can get from Karn Scion of Urza. Now, uh, in his sideboard, nothing's extremely out of place here. Uh, a lot of the decks are not running copies of Argyle's Bloodfest. Seth, Seth is still on Argyle's Bloodfest. Uh, a couple copies of Death Gorge Scavenger have been showing up in a lot of these decks, and even some Reclamation Sages um, to be able to deal with opposing enchantments and things of that nature. Uh, but overall, that's your Golgari decks. It is a Tier 1 strategy. I 100% believe that Golgari mid range in some form or another will be in standard until um, the next set comes out at least I would expect to see this deck continue on from that um, I do want to go ahead and give a, a quick little caveat here of not only does the deck uh, is the deck good in Golgari but there are some Selesnia decks that are floating around using um, the <clears throat> wild growth walker um, Merfolk Branch Walker, Jade Light Ranger package, the Explorer package, if you will, uh, to support Angels themes and other uh, mid-range themed decks. Now, um, that that still doesn't make it a Tier 1 deck for me. Um, I'm really thinking that I just highly expect to see these decks in the top 8 of every single event that we're going to have over the next couple months. I do not think that we're going to just push this deck out of the meta. And that's why I think that this is a Tier 1 strategy. <clears throat> And I think that if you were going to spend your money on cards and you did like this mid-range type strategy, these long grindy games, this would be the perfect deck for you. Now, next I'm going to talk about what I think might be one of the best decks, if not the best deck, all together in standard right now. And this is Jeskai Midrange. Now, or, or sorry, Jeskai Control. Now, not all copies of Jeskai Control are running any copies of Raul Zarek. I personally think that a single singleton copy of Raul Zarek um, is, is quite fun in the decks. And I do not think that it's, um, it's jank enough or um, cute enough uh, to, to warrant being taken out of the deck. Um, is it 100% necessary? No. Is it win more? Not necessarily either. Um, and I just really like Raul Zarek. I think that uh, his ultimate is a great way to close the game out very early. And it gives you a little bit more wiggle room, um, training wheels, if you will, for a new person to the deck. I think that um, you know having this Raul Zarek that you can get to and get to the ultimate um, is a lot safer if you are coming up against an opponent that is going to make you um, you know grind the game out um, to the point where you have to kill them with your Teferi emblem which can take a ton of time which is why I like the one copy of Raul Zarek. Now that's not the only way that this deck can win. Um, this deck can, you know, expansion explosion with a ton of mana off of its Azor's Gateway. Um, for better or worse, this is an Azor's Gateway to Fairy deck. Azor's Gateway, um, once you get five uh, cards with different converted mana costs under Azor's Gateway, you're going to gain five life and then you're going to untap Azor's Gateway and transform it. With the Fairy, you can, um, you can tap Azor's Gateway. Um, use your Teferi trigger at the end of um, turn. So with that trigger on the stack, go ahead and tap Azor's Gateway, create a ton of mana. Um, then 
you untap it with uh, Teferi, go ahead and tap it again. And then at that point, you'll be able to just have a just a ton of mana to sink into an explosion. Uh, explosion deals X damage to any target. Uh, target player draws X cards. Um, it is notable that if you are just going to be killing your opponent and you know that you're going for lethal, you may or may not have 20, 20 plus life in your, um, or 20, 20 plus cards left in your deck that you might want to actually target the opponent and say, you know what? You're going to take 20, 25 life and you're going to draw 25 cards. Um, that They're going to take the damage beforehand but you don't want to um, you don't want to die because you couldn't draw all the cards in your deck, um, so you can do that. It's also um, a little bit of a note that expansion can copy a fight with fire, uh, even if it's been kicked. Um, so you know if someone goes to fight with fire you for ten, you can always you know, expansion and copy that. Um, Bane fire, however, will be on the stack as whatever converted mana cost you put it on as. So unless you're casting it for two. Uh, or less, then uh, you're not going to be copying it with expansion. So, uh, you know, those are some, some small things to think about. Overall, though, I think this is a 100% pure control deck. I think that the deck, um, you know, did very well, uh, very well for um, Eli, and um, he did win first place in New Jersey with the deck. Now, his version of the deck was um, w did not have a Ralzeric. It had an extra divination in the deck. Um, so, no Ralzeric and the extra divination... Um, was his version of the deck and I personally just think that the deck has room for a Ralzeric and I would really like to play it because I want the training wheels. I want the extra win con in the main board um, because I don't think that I'm uh, experienced enough with the deck. As you get more experience with the deck you might want to take those training wheels out. Now um, as um, and you may not want to play it because I've called them training wheels. However um, in the sideboard, there's a lot more win cons. Um, there's everything from Rekindling Phoenix to Lyra Dawnbringer, Niv-Mizzet, and Nezahal. Uh, all of these can easily win the game. Uh, Immortal Sun may seem like it's a, a strange card to be in the sideboard of a Teferi deck, but there are going to be some points where you bring in your Rekindling Phoenixes, your Nezahals, your Lyra Dawnbringers, your Niv-Mizzets, and Immortal Sun is just absolutely wonderful. You've got Revitalize to gain some extra life, draw some extra cards. Kind of bringing this in takes you down to a 58 card deck. You're just going to cycle it out, gain a little bit of life, you know, negate a little bit of damage that came at you, and you know, just cycle it out for another card. Now, Invoke the Divine, being able to gain you 4 life, plus destroying target artifact or enchantment is absolutely wonderful as well. Ixalan's Binding, being able to hit anything, making sure that subs subsequent copies of that cannot be played. Another absolutely wonderful removal spell. And then, of course, Cleansing Nova sometimes is absolutely necessary. I will mention that there are no Cleansing Novas in the main board. Instead, um, he just went for Settle of Wreckage, Star of Extin Extinction, and uh, Deafening Clarions. Um, multiple times we've seen in the gameplay this weekend with Deafening Clarion either being you know, cast two copies of it uh, to kill Carnage Tyrants or a copy of Deafening Clarion copied by an expansion uh, to kill Carnage Tyrants and things of that nature. So um, the deck does have the the reach to to close the games out with you know Azor's Gateway and its burn spells. However, uh, most of the time you're just going to get that Teferi Emblem. You're going to oppress your opponent to the point where they cannot play magic and then you're going to take the win from there. So this is uh, your other tier 1 deck. Next here, we've got the last deck on my list as being tier 1. So we've got Golgari Midrange, we've got Jeskai Control, and then unfortunately, I do believe that Mono Red is still tier 1, ladies and gentlemen. Um, here I've actually picked the Frenzy Red deck that we played um, a couple nights ago. Uh, this is the first place winner from GP Lil, Lyle? Yeah, Lily. We'll call it GP Lily. Um... Anyway, uh, Frenz Frenzy Red is a very low-to-the-ground, aggressive deck that uses cards like Runaway Steamkin to allow it to churn through the top of its deck once you get an, 
an experimental frenzy down. Um, in the sideboard, you'll see cards like Treasure Map. Um, Treasure Map's actually wonderful in this deck, being able to allow you to scry to change the top card of your library so that you can keep going through your deck. Uh, one mana to be able to um, keep casting spells off the top of your deck is absolutely wonderful. So, you know, when you do get that experimental frenzy down, if you do have a Treasure Map, you can just, you know, keep clearing the top of your library with your Treasure Maps and then keep going deeper and deeper into the deck using Runaway Steamkins as more and more mana. Um, every couple, uh, getting these on uh, alternating uh, plus ones, so ones on two, ones on three, you go ahead and take the three counters off of one, um, you cast something, now the next one's on three, and so on and so on and so on. Um, it doesn't take long to really, really churn, um, churn through a lot of spells with Runaway Steamkin. You could say it would run away with the game. Uh, ha, ha. Uh, Fanatical Firebrand has actually been an absolute wonderful piece in the deck, allowing your shocks to reach um, you know three three power or three toughness creatures, allowing your lightning strikes to go a little bit farther, a little bit um, you know higher because you do need to be able to kill the drakes. There are a lot of drakes being played, and we'll talk about the drakes deck uh, a little bit uh, later. But there are a lot of drakes being played. And I think that uh, Fanatical Firebrand pairing with some of your other um, spells like Wizard's Lightning, Lightning Strike, things of that nature, absolutely wonderful. Uh, you will see a couple copies of Rekindling Phoenix here. It's one of the best blockers that you can have. However, um, we do see that, you know, just like this deck has in the sideboard, Lava Coil, uh, the Drake decks are running Lava Coil. Now, in the future, we may actually end up seeing, you know, the red decks adopt some of the same strategies that the um, Boros Angels deck has adopted with the multiple copies of um, Dire Fleet Daredevil in the side so that you can actually use your opponent's copies of Lava Coil and things of that nature. Um, so we may see more and more of that as, um, as the future, you know, unfolds here for our meta. I would not be surprised to start seeing Dire Fleet Daredevils um, as a three or even four of in the sideboards of these um, these mono red decks but all in all the mono red deck is definitely a top contender for one of the best decks in standard um, it has plenty of um, plenty of, of threats it can get in very early and then it has enough reach with its shocks lightning strikes wizards lightnings and then of course you know card advantage from experimental frenzy to keep pushing deep into the late game and burn your opponent out now you will need to be worried about you know wild growth walkers and things of that nature but all in all the deck is really solid and i think it's a um, a solid choice for anyone looking to invest in a deck that they can play for the next couple months now um, now that we've talked about all the tier one decks, I want to I want to to drop down to the tier 1.5 decks, and I'm not going to be talking about any tier two decks today. And I do not believe that my list contains all of the tier 1.5 decks. I believe that there are a few few versions or um, takes on some of the top tier decks that do fall in the 1.5 category, and um, I'm just not going to be covering those. Um, a quick honorable mention here for the 1.5 decks is going to be the Abzan Midrange or the Abzan Knights decks. Now, I pulled up the Abzan Midrange deck because it's a lot like the Golgari deck where you, know, you have the Explore package and things of that nature. Um, personally, this only gets an honorable mention because it's almost a you know combination of of two other very good decks uh, but basically it is using the wild growth walker package along with uh, merfolk branch walkers seeker squires and jade light rangers um, to to get you know that extra life gain to get the you know that those incremental um, gains throughout the throughout the the game and then of course um, splashing white for a few choice cards like militia bugler or um, knight of autumn or even tristani discordant are all wonderful wonderful cards um, and that's kind of the reason to be splashing white in this Golgari deck. I don't believe that the deck is um, as strong as the Golgari decks, but I do believe that it is a solid take. And if you wanted to have some fun with it, you wanted to play a three-color deck, um, I do want to say that you're probably just weakening the, num the number one deck in the format by adding a third color. But all in all, the deck is still very solid and... If you wanted to play with something like Abzan or Sultai, um, I highly recommend you know basic Golgari and uh, you know play 
the Explore packages or the Knights package and you should have a really really solid deck list. Now I want to move into the deck that I actually thought could very well be tier one and um, it, it, it took me a long time to actually put this at tier 1.5 and um, it could actually go back to tier one. I've um, personally picked Brad Nelson's list here. He came in second place. Um, I, the reason I've picked Brad Nelson's list and I've also got a Selesnya version of Angels here that I'm going to show you guys is because I believe these were both meta calls. Uh, if we quickly look over at the Selesnya uh, Angels list, you're going to see four copies of Takatli Honor Guard in the main board. And then if we switch back to the Angels, uh, the Boros Angels list, you're also going to see the same four copies of Takatli Honor Guard. Well, okay, four different copies, but four copies, right? So, um, Takatli Honor Guard being a pure meta call, I don't think that you you would want to keep this in against you know um, other decks like uh, Drakes or something like that. Um, against most of the Drake decks, people are taking out the the four Takatli Honor Guards and they're bringing in the Dire Fleet Daredevils, um, which you know again allows you to use your opponent's uh, copies of Lava Coil and things of that nature, which they will 100% be bringing in against a deck that has Rekindling Phoenixes and things of that nature. Um, they will need to you know need something more than Lava Coil to deal with Aurelia, um, Resplendent Angel, also just a wonderful card. Um, we do see the Angels package here and I highly recommend that if you guys want to know more about the Boros Angels deck um, dropping bombs um, this week actually guest starred Brad Nelson who which um, who along with you know Brian Brandouin and um, Corey Baumeister um, and you know that entire team put a lot of work into this deck um, and you know the deck did make it to the finals uh, even Jim Davis played a version of this deck so there's a lot of content on this very deck out there for you guys to go um, you know scoop up just absorb it and um, you'll get to, to hear some inside thoughts on how Brad Nelson would sideboard for a particular matchup and the deck is just a really good meta deck it um, it has all the tools to fight against the top tier decks in the meta and if you wanted to be that meta caller then this could be the best deck for you um, it is a very good deck However, this is probably one of the worst decks to get on MTG Arena as the number of Mythics in the deck is, is through the roof. I think it's like 18 Mythics or something like that. Um, here, we'll sort by rarity. Um, there we go. 18 Mythics. Yes, 18 Mythics in the deck. So if you're wanting to play this on Arena, then this is probably not the deck for you unless you just happen to have 18 Mythic Wild Cards laying around. Um, I am personally trying to put this together, you know, slowly trying to put this deck together as I believe the deck um, has a lot of... Um, a lot of ground in our current meta and I think that um, a lot of these cards will see use in other decks um, again I do want to just kind of point out that that the um, Selesnya version of the same deck also runs your know, resplendent angel Lyra Dawnbringer now for the four drop angel you don't get Aurelia you get Shalai Voice of Plenty but that opens you up to cards like Vivian Reed, which will help in the Angel's Mirror. You still have the Takatli Honor Guards, Adanto's Vanguards. Here, we've actually made room for Knight of Grace and a couple of Thorn Lieutenants, so a lot of early, um, you know, low-to-the-ground creatures. History of Benalia working, uh, you know, in these decks, just doing a lot of a lot of work. Um, the deck does um, get to get away with running some copies of Flower to Flourish and then um, Assured Assemble. But my main thing in these decks is the fact that it has some Vivian Reeds to help you keep drawing into more creatures, um, as that is one of the biggest problems with the Boros decks, is they run out of ways to, you know, gain those card advantages, those incremental card advantages they just do not have. And with Vivian Reed, they actually, uh, they solve that very well. Now, in the sideboard, we'll see a lot of the same stuff, um, you know, that some of the Golgari decks are using Carnage Tyrant, more Vivian Reed, uh, but because they're in white, they have access to Settle the Wreckage, Cleansing Nova, uh, things of that nature. Now, um, all in all, I still think that this is a solid take on Angels, and uh, either one of the Angel strategies that you wanted to play with, I think would be a very viable strategy. 
As of right now, though, if you're in white, I do think that mainboarding for Takatli Honor Guards is going to be highly beneficial for you. And then, you know, taking those out, um, if you're not against Golgari, is going to be your, your best bet. I think that there's still going to be a ton of Golgari being played. People have already been on the deck for a couple weeks. Most people who are buying cards have already purchased their Golgari decks, and they're not going to be coming off of those very soon. It would take a, a major change um, in the meta for people to come off of those Golgari decks. They are still very strong, and they will continue to win matches. Um, so those are your Angels decks. Next, I'm going to talk about um, some control decks that are not um, that are not um, Jeskai control and I'm, I'm just going to kind of lump both of these together as Demir based control decks um, you have you have the version um, that is Esper which uh, is basically a you know a Demir control deck a lot of counter spells some good draw spells and chemistry's insight you've got good kill spells with um, you know cast down moment of craving Early board sweepers like Ritual of Soot and uh, Veraska's Contempt to deal with problematic uh, permanents there. And then, you know, your win cons are Teferi, Dream Eater, and Chromium. Now, other than that, you know, the deck is really straightforward. You either kill it or you counter it. And if you can't kill it or counter it, you bounce it and you try again next time. That's basically the plan of the deck. Um, and it just gets there. Teferi is still doing wonderful things in the meta. I do want to mention that in the sideboard um, there are normally multiple copies of Thief of Sanity and almost all of the sideboards of the versions of uh, Esper Control that I have been able to find and that is um, that is 100% like a thing. You, you're, you're wanting to take your kill spells and stuff out when you're playing against these control decks. They're going to bring in a couple more creatures. These creatures being Thief of Sanity which will then allow them to get more creatures from your deck if you are a creature based deck or if you're a control deck and you can't answer this then it starts hitting in they're getting more counter they're getting more um, other they're more threats from you and then now um, you know you're you're light on answers for threats and now they're holding a deck like holding a handful of counter and stuff playing your threats against you thief of sanity wonderful wonderful card I do like its placement in the sideboard of these Demir decks. Um, I want to move on to the Grixis Control deck. Now, with Grixis, Grixis Control, we actually see um, Thief of Sandy showing up mainly in the main board of these decks. Um, the decks have a little bit more hand hate with cards like Thought, Thought Erasure because you sometimes need to check before you can just slam down your Nickel Bolas. Uh, Nickel Bolas being a wonderful um, game-ending threat. Um, you know, just absolutely terrific. Now, this is kind of taking the place of, you know, Teferi and things of that nature. Do I think Nicol Bolas is as good as Teferi? Mm, probably not, but he's still a really, really powerful card, and he can 100% just take over the game. Now, as far as Doom Whisperer goes, Doom Whisperer is wonderful. It lines up very well against cards like um, um, Lyra, you know, being able to live through uh, a Lyra swing and then it also lines up very well against cards like um, opposing doom whispers and carnage tyrants uh, both of these are you know six toughness creatures that you know you need to have at least six power to be able to trade out with them and doom whisper works really well for that um, because you, know, you really don't have a lot of ways to deal with cards like carnage tyrant now I'm not a 100% fan of the disinformation campaign but most of the numbers I have been seeing are decks that are running some number of disinformation campaign. So I do think that the the card has some merit. You do need to be careful, and I think that is one of the reasons that you know you have cards like Thought Erasure in the main board before you start playing your disinformation campaigns. As Nullhide Ferox is still a card in standard, people are still playing Mono Green or Stompy variants, and uh, Nullhide Ferox shows up in those decks. So be careful if you are going to play you know disinformation campaign. Decks. Um, as far as Vine Mayor goes, Thief of Sanity beats Vine Mayor. Um, in most decks that have Vine Mayor, you're going to hit with Thief of Sanity. You're going to um, get a green creature. 
from amongst you know their cards, and then you just start blocking with their own green creatures, and um, it really breaks Nightmare's heart. So Thief of Sanity, wonderful card here. Uh, Dream Eater being able to basically time walk your opponent. You know, you put a threat down, you remove whatever they just done, and then you also get to surveil four to make sure that your next draw is going to be as potent as ever. Um, Discovery Dispersal, another great card. Um, at first, I was just really in love with Discovery. Then the more I got to play with this card, the more I was, you know, really liking the fact that Dispersal is also a great card. Each opponent returns a non-land uh, permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost of among permanents they control uh, to its owner's hand. Then they discard a card. Um, multiple times I've been able to cast Dispersal when my opponent was hellbent already, putting a card back in their hand, um, their highest converted mana cost, what they have spent the most work trying to get onto the battlefield. Um, they return this, and then they have to discard it. Multiple times I have been able to get cards like Carnage Tyrant with it, as Carnage Tyrant is a six converted mana cost spell. And if you do have your opponent hellbent, then they are going to be um, discarding that Carnage Tyrant. And that is a wonderful feeling, ladies and gentlemen, especially when you know you're about to untap into you know flipping nickel bolus and you put the carnage tyrant down on your side of the battlefield um, a lot of great effects if you are a grixis fan grixis does have a you know very good deck in the format right now and i don't believe that you would be making a huge mistake by picking this as your deck for the uh the season if you are a fan of how grixis plays i will say that because this is a mid-range type control deck that you will want to continuously tweak this deck based on your local meta um, with fluctuations that are happening in the meta from week to week you'll want to tweak this deck uh, maybe your number of lava coils will come up maybe they will go down uh, if you think there's a lot of still leaf stompy or something like that being played then you might want to cut down on some different disinformation campaigns or learn to simply play around it um, so a lot of options here uh, the mana base is still pretty sweet but we all think that the mana base is going to get much much better when we get our Rakdos lands um, so you know Grixis is um, Grixis is a fine investment as I think that the deck is going to have a lot of weight even after the next set hits. So um, I don't think that Grixis gets any worse come the next set. Um, if anything, you know, the new land base um, and whatever cards come out of Rakdos are really going to help this deck pick up some power. We may see it go further into control, but my expectations are for this to go further into mid-range, uh, picking up on a couple of the, the really um, powerful creatures that we should be getting out of the Rakdos Guild. Now, um, those are your control decks. Now, here I want to I wanna talk about a couple tempo decks. Now, um, Owen Turdenwall did a lot of work on uh, Arclight Phoenix, and... Um, We've seen a lot of Arclight Phoenix this weekend. Uh, Arclight Phoenix and Golgari were some of the, the most played decks. Um, however, the Angels deck does seem to have a really good matchup against the Arclight Phoenix deck in Game 2 and Game 3. Um, it is very common for you know these decks to be running a lot of different spells, um, cards like Maximize Velocity and things of that nature. We see versions of this running cards like you know Crash Through, um, a lot of Jumpstart cards so that you can just you know simply churn through your deck uh, casting as many spells as possible so that you can get that arc light phoenix back you do need to cast three or more instant and sorcery cards before your combat phase um, in order to get your arc light phoenixes back um, however that is not as hard as it may seem with cards like goblin electromancer um, just give you guys an idea you can turn to a goblin electromancer turn three chart a course um, for one mana, discard Arclight Phoenix. Um, then you can Radical Idea, and then possibly Radical Idea again, or a Tormenting Voice, discarding um, you know Arclight Phoenix. Uh, either way, you have a ton of options to be able to get your Arclight Phoenixes in the graveyard before your combat step on turn three, plus draw a number of cards. And, um, you know, swing in for quite a bit of damage there on turn three. Now, as soon as turn four starts, you're going to see, you know, cards like um, Crackling Drake start showing up. Um, the deck, you, some of these decks are running Enigma Drakes and things of that nature. Uh, I personally think that the uh, Goblin Electromancer, Beacon Bolt, Crackling Drake, Arclight Phoenix, you know, as your main threats. 
Um, you know, I think this is uh, probably the version that I would want to play, but the Enigma Drake version is also still very good. Um, in the sideboard, we see cards like Rekindling Phoenix, uh, Fiery Cannonade, which is very good versus you know uh, you know most of the Night stacks and such. Um, Fire Mind's research against you know control decks and things of that nature. This card has actually been phenomenal, and when I have done some testing with it, I actually thought that this card was a lot better than I had originally given it credit for. It's surprising how many counters you can start to put on this over a very short period of time when um, most of your cards are just cycling anyway. Uh, when you're, you know, just chart a course, chart a course, radical idea, radical idea, you're just going to start putting a ton of cards on your Fire Minds research and then it's only two mana to start removing those counters uh, to either, you know, dome uh, your opponent or dome a Lyra or something of that nature for, um, you know, for five points of damage or just start drawing more cards. Um, either one, most of the time I did end up using this as five additional points of damage, uh, whether that was to a creature or to your opponent, it is any target. So, you know, you take your pick. Now, um, again, if you are an, an Is It fan, I think that this is one of the better versions of Is It that you can be playing. There are a couple other, you know, builds of this out there. I do not think that those builds are much worse or much better than this particular version of the deck. I, um, I personally think that I would have a version of the deck that had at least one Niv-Mizzet in the sideboard, but that's a flavor thing for me. I also think that Niv-Mizzet is a wonderful card. We see some of these decks starting to adapt and have, you know, copies of Dive Down and things of that nature in the deck. Um, just because, you know, a Crackling Drake can come out of nowhere and just hit you for, you know, a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, it does need to be said, because I've heard a lot of people talk about this over the weekend, um, that you're not going to reduce um, reduce the count on Crackling Drake by removing Graveyards. Graveyard Hate is not going to help you near as much as you would think versus Crackling Drake. Um, whereas, you know, it may help you against Arclight Phoenixes, but at that point you then have to worry about the Crackling Drakes killing you. Crackling Drake's power is equal to the number of instants and sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. So it does not, um, it does not lose any benefit when you jumpstart a card or something like that. So um, I really do like Crackling Drake. I think it's a wonderful card, not to mention it enters the battlefield and draws you an additional card. So uh, the Is It Phoenixes deck... Um, or the Is It Phoenix is in it, Is It Phoenix decks? Um, they're all very wonderful decks, and um, I think that that is a tier 1.5 strategy. I think that there's going to be a lot of people playing the the Phoenix decks, uh, whether they have Enigma Drakes, N um, Niv Mizzet, um, Goblin Electromancer, like whatever they have in them. Um, you're going to see Crackling Drake and Arc Light Phoenix. Wonderful, wonderful deck. Uh, and I, I think that uh, we, we have to have answers for it. And uh, I'm going to talk about some of those answers here shortly. Um, I do want to go ahead and talk about Gabriel Nassif's version of Mono Blue. I have played quite a bit with Mono Blue this season. I, uh, I think that Mono Blue is still a very competitive deck. Uh, do I think it is the best deck out there? No, I do not. Um, do I think that... Um, it is probably one of the most affordable decks to get into Magic with. Absolutely. Um, as far as Arena goes, this is your deck. Um, I have highly recommended that um, you know people pick up this deck for Arena, as um, the deck has zero rare cards <clears throat> or zero mythic rares in it, and it only has six copies of rare cards in the entire deck or in the uh, in the main board. As far as the sideboard goes. Um, when it comes to the sideboard, uh, you're looking at two more copies of rare cards and everything else being uncommon and common. So if you're looking for a really competitive um, deck to play on Arena, I highly recommend this deck. I think the deck is wonderful. I think the deck has a lot of legs and its tempo alone can really push you um, where you need to be. Uh, you can finish games out very quickly with cards like Tempest Gen, Merfolk Trickster, I, I, I continuously keep finding more and more tricks with Merfolk Trickster. Uh, even making a Crackling Drake all of a sudden have zero power. Um, it works. It works. Um, you know, 
Merfolk Trickster, wonderful card, um, knocking Crackling Drakes out of the air, knocking Lyra's out of the air, so you, you swing through um, with your Tempest Gen for, for lethal. Um, not to mention, you know, it's, it has a ton of protection with cards like Dive Down, Spell Pierce, uh, to be able to protect those Miscloak Heralds, um, even your Siren Storm Tamers um, help protect them. And then, of course, you know, Warkite Marauder being able to do some of the same th tricks that Merfolk Trickster can do, only during your combat step. Um, sleep being able to sleep the Golgari decks to buy you those extra couple turns you need um, in order to, to get through. Um, it does need to be mentioned that Merfolk Trickster can make a Wild Growth Walker lose all abilities while like something like a Jade Light Ranger is on the stack so that your opponent can't gain life or get the additional counters. Um, so, you know, a lot of things going on here with this deck. The deck has a lot more, um, it has it, it has more legs than, than most would think. And, uh, you know, at first glance, you're like, oh, that's a cute mono blue. Seriously, give it some play. Uh, it won't set, your, won't set your wallet back a lot to be able to, uh, to get yourself a, a copy of this deck, no matter what format you're playing it on. I think it's uh, still around 10 bucks on Magic Online. Um, and again, uh, probably won't cost you near that much on Arena. Most free-to-play players can uh, play this. I even have a video out uh, where I built my mine initially uh, for Arena. And then, of course, the last strategy I've got for you guys is Selesnia tokens. Um, I still think that it is a uh, you know a top tier strategy. It is a tier 1.5 strategy. Um, the deck just basically goes very wide, very quick, using the Convoke. Uh, mechanic to to do very nasty things to your opponent uh, being able to you know put multiple creatures down by having three creatures on the board by the end of turn two is absolutely wonderful for a you know a turn three um, you know conclave tribunal or you know a history of analia into a free conclave tribunal um, so like on turn three you can actually play history tap all the creatures from history for Conclave Tribunal, or you can just swing with your Legion's Landing guy or your Haunted Witness and your two Sapperlings and flip your Legion's Landing and then hard cast Conclave Tribunal. Like just whatever it is you want to do, you can do that. Um, it's also very easy to get, you know, Venerated Loxodons, um, these cards down, which will pump your entire board, which helps you fight against, you know, uh, a number of, of um, you know, opposing. Um, you know, things like um, Goblin Chain Whirler, for instance. So uh, the card is really, really, or the deck is really, really good. We see in the sideboard that, you know, there are copies of Takatli Honor Guard showing up here. Um, like a lot of the other sideboards, you know, we have copies of Vivian Reed. I also think this is one of the better Immortal Suns decks. Um, I think that the Immortal Sun is a wonderful card against, you know, the Golgari, um, you know, mid-range decks that have a lot of Planeswalkers in them. So um, this deck doesn't have a lot of planeswalkers vivian reed and then um you know in the main board there are no planeswalkers so um you know immortal sun fits in really well here kind of like we originally said with the cotley honor guard that it doesn't have any non-bows with the angels decks um so you know it fit in really well in the angels decks Immortal Sun doesn't have any real non-bows here, um, so it fits in really well, you know, and helping beef up your creatures is absolutely what you want. Um, that's kind of the whole point of the deck running, you know, cards like Benelish Marshall, um, Tristani, things of that nature. Um, Shalai in this deck, uh, Shalai can actually, you know, pump and make your army much bigger. Uh, you've got cards like Amira that uh, as you, you know, use your other mechanics like, you know, Convoke, you're going to get additional creatures off of it. It's just a wonderful deck. Uh, I don't think that the deck is, you know, tier one status. Um, you know, a lot of people were really pushing the deck at the beginning of the meta, uh, but it seems that, you know, the Golgari decks have the means to to, to fight beyond this. Uh, cards like Fine Finale um, have been able to just kind of hurt these these decks. Um, however, they do have some really explosive uh, draws. So uh, I want to move on and talk to a couple talk about a couple sideboard cards here really quick uh, before we end this. <clears throat> we've got um, we've got some cards here, and I'm going to sort these in color. Um, I wish that I would have been able to pull uh, you know more more cards for blue uh, for you guys to use, but unfortunately there were just you know not. You know, a lot of um, blue cards that I just wanted to talk about that could fit in a lot of decks um, other than, you know, decks that um, are 
already known for using you know copies of negate and things like that um, I did want to just mention that disdainful stroke is in a at a wonderful spot right now um, as it stops most of the problematic things that you're gonna have to deal with in the meta right now I think that the copies of disdainful stroke in a lot of decks will increase um, so it's something that to, to keep your mind on <clears throat> if you've been used to dodging essence scatters and such you may want to start getting used to dodging uh, disdainful strokes and things of that nature. Uh, as far as white cards go, we've got a, quite a few um, white cards that I think will be showing up in a lot of of, um, of sideboard um, sideboards or main boards here in the near future. Uh, we've already seen Takatli Honor Guard starting to show up in you know main boards, sideboards everywhere for the last uh, few weeks. And I don't think that's going to change. I do think that, you know, if uh, more and more people start running to Kotli Honor Guard, that we might see, you know, a little bit of a fluctuation on how many um, Golgari decks are being played. As the Golgari decks, you know, start going down in number, we'll start to see less and less to Kotli Honor Guards in the main boards. And then that will, you know, create a chain of events where, you know, more and more Golgari decks start to do better because, you know, the to Kotli Honor Guards and move to the side. So, you know, we're going to end up in, you know, that uh, that Paper Rock Scissors type of rotating meta. And uh, to Kotli Honor Guard, along with Wild Growth Walker, will be two of the creatures that you see kind of fluctuate in and out based on how good Mono Red is doing or, um, you know, things of that nature or based on how good uh, Golgari is doing. We're going to see, you know, um, Wild Growth Walkers go to the sideboard if Mono Red's in, in a bad spot this in a given week or something um, as Mono Red, you know, comes back and wins, uh, you know, a tournament from time to time, and I think that it will. Uh, we're going to see the Wild Growth Walkers, you know, pick back up in the main board. Um, as far as Golgari goes, if you're playing Golgari, your best answers against Golgari are going to be Vivian Reed and Carnage Tyrant, which, you know, I mentioned these earlier. Um, if you're playing red decks, uh, you're going to want to be able to answer the Lyras. The Angels decks are not going anywhere. And like I said, you know, the Angels strategy was this close to being put in at, at Tier 1 for me. Um, so, you know, if you want to call it Tier 1, then, you know, by all means, it's still a great deck. And it's any deck on this list would be a wonderful deck um, for you guys to, you know, pilot for the remainder of the season um, until our next season. Which, you know, some of these decks will survive, some of these decks may get some hate, um, and, you know, some of these decks may transform into something completely new. Um, I do think that Fight with Fire is a wonderful card. We're seeing the, this in some of the control decks. We're seeing this in, uh, you know, the um, any deck that has red probably has access to some number of Fight with Fires. Do think about that. Um, if you're worried about Angel's decks, you're worried about Lyra's and things like that, you're going to need some copies of Fight with Fire. History of Benalia and uh, a lot of the other like White Weenie decks um, all fall victim to um, Fiery Cannonade. Do be wary, though, that uh, cards like Dire Fleet Daredevil are human pirates, and they will not die to uh, Fiery Cannonade. Just so happens they're in the same colors as Fiery Cannonade, and could be, be could be played in the same deck. Um, Lava Coil, absolutely, uh, you know, at a great spot right now. Um, this is a main deckable card. Uh, we're seeing a lot of decks actually have copies of this main board. And I think that that's wonderful. Um, as the Crackling Drake decks, the Enigma Drake decks, um, even the Mono Blue decks with Tempest Gen, as those decks become more and more powerful, you're going to need more and more Lava Coils to deal with them. Um, two mana for a Veraska's Contempt seems really good for me. Um, yes, it will not kill absolutely anything, but it does exile them. You know, the Lava Coil does exile. Veraska's Contempt, even though it was getting weak in the, uh, the past couple weeks, um, has picked back up a little bit of steam we're seeing more Veraska's Contempts being played uh, Moment of Craving being in a wonderful spot I do want to mention that Moment of Craving is even though um, it, this is really good against the red decks and you are going to see you know uh, as red is better you're going to see more Moment of Cravings um, you know come into some of the Golgari decks and the other black um, decks however um, as we see more Angels and Takatli Honor Guards we're going to see that shift go back to more Cast Downs um, even though Cast Downs is not wonderful against some of the Angels Angels decks and things of that nature, it is absolutely wonderful against, you know, Takatli Honor Guard and being able to remove the Takatli Honor Guard will then uh, turn your Chupacabras and things like that back online, which they can deal with Lyras and things uh, of that nature. Now, uh, Immortal Sun, this is just kind of one of those, hey, this is a really good card in the meta right now and some decks are, are able to run it and other decks are not able to run it. So, if you are, you know, brewing in the next couple of weeks, um, highly consider, you know, 
is your deck capable of supporting the Immortal Sun? Uh, will the Immortal Sun actually hurt you more than it will help you? And if the answer is, you know, this will help, then you might really want to consider putting this into your deck. Um, just playing it against some of the Teferi decks, especially in game one, you just automatic win. They do not have a win con. Um, there are very few ways that uh, some of the Teferi decks can even like get rid of this um, so immortal sun wonderful card um, making everything you cast costs um, one less making your creatures larger and giving you extra cards and shutting down those planeswalkers um, now i do want to mention that if you're in demir thief of sanity is in a wonderful spot right now um, and you know if you uh, want to be you know fighting you know that good fight put this in your sideboard um, if you're not in a mid-range shell or something put this in your sideboard and when your opponent takes out all their removal for your control deck, bring in your Thief of Sanity um, and uh, or your multiple copies of Thief of Sanity and then just wreak havoc on a deck that is completely ill-prepared to deal with you. Or if you are playing against a Demir strategy, do keep that in mind as you are sideboarding um, to you know be on the lookout for their, their number of Thief of Sanities. Um, as uh, if you didn't win game one, <clears throat> then there's a good chance that you might lose game two if you do not leave in some number of answers for Thief of Sanity. Um, as far as um, you know, the rest of the white cards, I, I kind of got away from them a little bit. Um, as wild growth walkers stay, you know, relevant in the in the meta, um, cards of that nature, uh, you're going to want good cheap ways to interact with them. A lot of times, you know, if uh, people will not swing with a wild growth walker um, just because they don't want it to get into a card like Seal Away, which is also a wonderful card. Um, so, you know, cards like Baffling In, being able to just absolutely, like, just grab the Wild Growth Walker, whether or not it is tapped or not, is great. Um, as we see more and more <clears throat> of the red decks show up, or as we see the red decks, you know, fade away, I think Shield Mayor will be a wonderful card. Um, Shield Mayor being able to, you know, attack through the red blockers, allowing you to just finish the game out. Um, it is only a 2-3, but um, it does allow you to just keep getting in for more and more damage. Um, and it's just a, a wonderful card. Entering the battlefield, you gain the three additional points of life, and now you have a, a, a three power or a three toughness body that can block most of the red decks. Um, it does need to be said that you know Goblin Chain Whirler can still get through this. Uh, however, most of the the other cards cannot. Um, Runaway Steamkin does have to grow a little bit before it can get there, uh, but that's. That's exactly what you're looking for with a card like this. You're looking to buy that time. So if red deck is becoming really prevalent in your meta, then you might want to consider some shield mares or uh, something of that nature. So um, that's going to do it. Remember, if you want to play this deck or any other, check out my sponsors, Mana Traders. They're a rental service uh, where you can rent and play any of these decks. Test them on Magic Online or in paper. Mana Traders does rent in paper. Um, so whether you're playing standard, vintage, legacy, modern, whatever format, uh, Mana Traders has got you covered. Just be a better ma Magic player. So I'm Eric. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time.